Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and this is Unit 9, Section 10 of AP Chemistry. The last section, we're going to be learning about electrolysis in this video. Now, electrolysis is a process by which you can take a solution that contains ions and connect a power source with two electrodes there and dip these electrodes into aqueous solutions of those ions and it'll power some, some half reactions. Usually, if we have a solution like this, maybe this is a nickel-2 chloride, as you can see here, and we pass a current of electricity through that solution, most likely our goal is to plate out some of that nickel onto an electrode. And we can use that for commercial purposes, perhaps for a nickel plating or, or some other sort of, uh, of application. So this is the stoichiometry of electrochemistry. This is often... Uh, how we are trying to, to calculate how much of that the nickel or what other metal like gold or silver you might be able to plate out onto an electrode. And so whenever we talk about the stoichiometry of electrochemistry, this is the equation that we're probably going to be using. Now, I is going to represent the current. That is from physics uh, and current is measured in amperes. Sometimes we just abbreviate that amps. That's the same thing. Now Q represents the actual quantity of electric charge. The actual flow of how many electrons have flowed into uh, the reaction. This is measured in coulombs. So Q is going to be coulombs. Now T stands for time, and that's how much time has elapsed over the course of the reaction. And that's going to be measured in seconds. So current equals electric charge over time in seconds. We're going to do several examples here so you can see how this works. Here's our first example. A current of 2.50 amperes is passed through a wire for three minutes. What is the quantity of electric charge that passes through the wire? So once again, we're going to use that equation, I equals Q over T. Now, it tells us what the current is. The current is 2.50 amps. So that's going to get plugged in for the I. And then Q is what we're solving for. It says, what is the quantity of electric charge? So Q is going to be our unknown. And T is the time. Now, it says 3.00 minutes. Well, don't write three down there because remember, time has to be in seconds. And so we have to convert that to seconds. Three times 60 is 180 seconds. So now all we have to, to do to find the quantity of electric charge, the Q, is to multiply 2.5 times 180. And we get that the answer is 450 coulombs. So that's the answer, 450 coulombs. Now, let's go one step further. Let's determine how many moles of electrons have passed through the wire. So we're going to take 450 coulombs, and we're going to convert that to moles of electrons. But how do we do that? Well, there is a constant that we learned a couple of videos ago called the Faraday constant. And it says that there are 96,485 coulombs in one mole of electrons. So we can actually use that as a conversion factor. So I'm putting coulombs on the bottom here, since that's what we're trying to cancel out. And the question is moles of electrons. So moles of electrons go on top. And like I said, Faraday's constant is one mole of electrons equals 96,485 coulombs. So we can cancel coulombs and just divide 450 by 96,485, and we find that it's 4.66 times 10 to the negative third moles of electrons that are passing through the wire. So that's how you can solve this. Let's take a look at another example here. This one says a 10 amp current is passed through a solution of nickel-2 chloride for one hour. What mass of nickel metal can be plated out? Well, once again, we're going to, first of all, calculate the amount of electric charge, just like we did in that last problem, because we're given the current, we're given the time, so we can figure out the electric charge pretty easily using the equation I equals Q over T. So we're going to plug and chug into that. I is for the current, 
and it says that the current is 10.00 amps. So I'm going to plug that in for I. Now Q is the electric charge. That's what we're trying to solve for. So that's my unknown. And the T is for time. Time has to be in seconds. Do you know how many seconds are in one hour? Well, 60 seconds times 60 minutes, that's 3,600 seconds. So that's going to be our value for T. So now we just have to multiply these numbers by each other, and we find that the electric charge is 36,000 coulombs. So that's the answer to the first part of that. Now, notice that's not what the question's asking for. The question's asking, what massive nickel metal can be plated out? And that's not the answer, is it? So we're going to have to go a step further and convert from coulombs to grams of nickel using stoichiometry. Now, how do we do that? Well, first of all, we know that in order to do a stoichiometry problem, we have to have a balanced equation, now, don't we? And we don't have a balanced equation yet. Well, we need to write that. We're starting with nickel-2 ions, and those nickel-2 ions are being turned into nickel metal. So the balanced half reaction for that process looks like this. Nickel 2 plus plus 2 electrons yields nickel. Make sure that you're able to write something like that from looking at the problem. Nickel 2 is being produced or being turned into nickel products. So there's our balanced half reaction. So now we can do our stoichiometry. I'm starting with 36,000 coulombs. So I'm going to start that uh, as our first number here. And the question is mass of nickel. So grams of nickel will be down here at the end. Now, in every reaction stoichiometry that we've done in this course, you might remember that the first step is convert to moles, isn't it? So moles. Well, moles of what? Because we have coulombs. Well, coulombs is a quantity of charge, isn't it? That's electrons. So let's convert to moles of electrons. And we do that using Faraday's constant. So coulombs have to go on the bottom here, so it'll cancel out. And moles of electrons go on top. And Faraday's constant tells us that one mole of electrons is equivalent to 96,485 coulombs. So I can put that into the conversion factor. Coulombs are going to cancel top and bottom. I'm now in moles of electrons. So that's step one. Step two is the mole ratio. So in our mole ratio, we see that we need to put electrons on the bottom so that electrons will cancel out. And I'm trying to convert to nickel. So that means that nickel needs to go on the top. And to get the numbers for this, I'm going to use the coefficients of my balanced equation. And the equation says that there's one nickel produced for every two electrons. Just use those coefficients. So it's one nickel for every two electrons. So now I can cancel out electrons top and bottom. I'm in moles of nickel, but I want to be in grams of nickel. So that means I have to do step three, which is convert to final unit. So in this last step, I'm going to have to put moles on the bottom and grams on top, because I'm converting to grams. And I can consult the periodic table for nickel, and I find that its molar mass is about 58.69 grams in one mole. That's just the atomic mass of nickel, of course. So now I can cancel moles top and bottom. And in my calculator, I'm going to take 36,000 divide by 96,485 divide by 2 times 58.69. And when I key that into my calculator, I find that I'm going to produce 10.95 grams of nickel. So that's how you do it. So we've got to calculate the charge and then figure out the grams of nickel using that stoichiometry process. Those same three steps that we learned way back in the earlier part of this course. Convert to moles, mole ratio, then convert to that final unit. Let's do one more problem here. This one says with a 30 amp current, how long will it take to plate out 50 grams of aluminum from a solution of aluminum chloride? Well, what do we do here? We have the amps. We're being asked to calculate time. The problem doesn't really tell us 
how many coulombs we have, but we can figure that out, can't we? So this time, our first step needs to be to determine the number of coulombs. So we're going to start with 50 grams of aluminum, and then we're going to convert using the, those same three stoichiometry steps to coulombs. Now, once again, we need a balanced equation. We don't have one yet, do we? Well, we're starting with aluminum ions in solution, and we're trying to plate out aluminum. Now, aluminum ions have a charge of positive 3, don't they? So that means that our overall balanced half reaction should be Al3 plus, plus 3 electrons, yields aluminum. Once again, make sure that you're able to write that. Otherwise, you're not going to get the right answer. So now, we can go ahead and do our stoichiometry. We're starting with 50.00 grams of aluminum, and we're trying to convert this to coulombs way down here at the end. So step one is convert to moles. So in our conversion factor, I need to have grams on the bottom and one mole on the top. I can look at the periodic table and see that there are 26.98 grams in one mole of aluminum. So now I can cancel grams. I'm in moles of aluminum. So now step two is the mole ratio. So use that balanced equation. I'm going to have to put aluminum on the bottom. I'm trying to convert to electric charge, so that would be electrons. So electrons go on top. And according to my balanced equation, it's three electrons for every one aluminum. So it's three to one in that mole ratio, right out of the balanced equation. So aluminum is out. We're now in moles of electrons, and we want to be in Coulomb. So this is step three. This is where we have to convert to final unit, which is Coulombs. And we're going to use Faraday's constant to do that. So that means I'm going to have to put moles of electrons on the bottom and Coulombs on the top. And as we know, Faraday's constant tells us there are 96,485 coulombs for every one mole of electrons. So now in this last step, I can cancel out both moles and electrons, as you can see there. And now I'm ready to do my math. So 50.00 divided by 26.98 times 3 times 96,485 gives me a total of about 536,500 coulombs. So now I have the number of coulombs, I have the current, and I want to find out the time. So now I can plug into that equation, I equals Q over T, and solve for T. So I is the current, and the problem tells me this is a 30 amp current. So that goes in there for I. I know what the Q is. I know what the... Uh, uh, the number of coulombs is, I just calculated that, 536,500, and I'm trying to solve for t. So in my calculator, when I algebraically solve here, it looks like I'm going to have to take 536,500 and divide that by 30. So when I solve, I get that the answer is 17,880 seconds. So what does that mean? I mean, that doesn't mean a whole lot to us. So, so if we divide that by 60, we can see how many minutes that would be. That's about 298 minutes. And maybe that's still even a bit hard to, to fathom. So if we divide that by 60 once more, we can convert that into, into hours and minutes. And we find that it's 4 hours and 58 minutes. So it's going to take almost 5 hours to plate out just 50 measly grams of aluminum using a pretty hefty 30 amp current. So hope you've learned something about electrolysis and the stoichiometry of that. Now we're at the end of the uh, nine units of the AP chemistry curriculum. Y if you've watched all these videos, you've watched over a hundred videos at this point. And so maybe you're wondering what now? I know it all, right? Well at this point it's time to review. So you can go into my AP review videos, and I have basically uh, each unit summarized into an approximate 10-minute video. So instead of having to watch all 100 videos over again, you can refresh your memory by watching you know, 10 minutes on unit 1, 10 minutes on unit 2, uh, 10 minutes on unit 3, and get through the entire course review in about an hour and a half or so. 
I hope you have enjoyed this video and all these videos. I'm Jeremy Krug. I've been teaching AP Chemistry for about 24 years, and I hope you have learned something in these videos. If you have, please slam that thumbs up button. I hope to see you again in my review videos. Thanks for watching, and keep learning chemistry.